does FLOSS stands for? Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax. Special Purpose. Keep that in mind. This is a six-year SPLOS, and it will generate $50.4 million. $50,400,000. $22.3 million of that goes to the county. $27 million, roughly, for county-wide projects. And then Sunnyside and Orchard Hill, you see their amounts there. <clears throat> it was agreed to by all governments, Spalding County, the city of Griffin, the city of Orchard Hill, and the city of Sunnyside. So it allows us all to collect that. We will collect the full 72 months on that. The first projects that we're doing are called bonded projects. Those projects that we're going to issue bonds for and the city's going to issue bonds for their projects that we feel we need to get out of the gate right away. One of those projects is a pickleball facility, which you've heard a lot about. Pickleball facility is less than a million dollars, and uh, we've talked at several places for locating this, and we're going to be the pickleball tournament capital of the Southeast. I'm sorry I'm gonna take it away from Sun City, but we are gonna take that title away from you and move it out, hopefully, to Wyoming and Ty's Park out there. And y'all know more about pickleball than I do. You may, how many have been to the senior center and had lunch? Part of the new senior center program? Give it a try. It's five bucks if you're between the ages of 50 and 60. And if you're like my assistant, over 60, then your meal is four dollars. So I encourage you to go do that. We uprooted about $125,000 to make the kitchen, convert the kitchen from a catering kitchen to a full-blown cooking kitchen. And so uh, I invite you to go down there. We're going to reimburse ourselves for that. We've been talking a lot. How many have been to Wyoming and Ty's Park? Been to a soccer game out there, anything like that? Soccer games out there. We have only one lighted field. We're going to light a couple more fields out there so that we can have more tournaments here to draw more hotel motel tax from having tournaments here, and it will also allow the teams to practice at night as well. <clears throat> 800 megahertz. We currently are paying rent on a tower site over on 155. It's over 110,000, up to now 110,000 dollars a year. We can build a brand new tower on county property over at a fire station, over at uh, Cabin Fire Station. For about four hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars, so we're going to go ahead and build that tower, stop that lease payment, so that we can stop uh, those payments going out, reduce the cost of the 911 service, reduce the cost of dispatch, and reduce our debt service. We're also going to acquire a new CAD and a new phone system for 911. Uh, the phone system will be voted on probably later this month or first of November. The CAD system will be after January. But effective December 31st, the telephone system will no longer be have maintenance available for it. So it could be you wake up January 1, you call 911, and nobody answers. So I can't have that because Tom and Helen will be calling William because all y'all will be calling Tom and Helen and saying, why is 911 not answering? So we're getting a new phone system. We are going to order that and get it installed by December 31st. <coughs> If you've ever been to the court system, our computer system in the court's office, how many in here have computers? Anybody have a computer? <laughs> I bet you don't have one that runs Windows 95 anymore, do you? <laughs> how about Windows 3.1? Anybody got that? We have Windows 95 operating currently in the clerk of court's office, outdated computer systems, things like that, old Unix stuff, lots of intertwining, intertwining. Nobody can talk to each other, things like that. We are spending $700,000 to upgrade the uh, system or the judicial system in the courthouse. We also have three buildings that we owe money on. Our correctional institution, when the county builds a building, if we don't build it with SPLOS, the only way we can build a building is to finance it. So we financed our correctional institution for 20 years. We financed the Cook Shopping Center, where the new senior center is located for 20 years. And then we've got <coughs> financing on, what's the third year? Um, the, uh, the 
fire station. Uh, fire station. I'm sorry. Fire station. LB Norton Fire Station. I apologize. So when we build new things, we have to lease purchase them over 20 years. And that annual debt service is paid over 20 years out of the general fund for uh, the Cooks building and the CI and for the fire departments that paid out of the fire district fund. So we're going to pay those off and the county commissioners have committed to rolling back taxes. Good. Commissioners have committed to rolling back taxes for the amount of debt service on those bonds. So that's all going to be paid up front. So the first year that you can have your taxes rolled back will be probably fiscal year 17 uh, which will be uh, calendar year 2017. So uh, we're going to do that. We're also going to do Fairmont Heritage Park. Does anybody know what a Rosenwald School is? We've got one of the only 200 and some odd left here in Spalding County. Rosenwald was the CEO of Sears and Roebuck, and he donated money for schools for African Americans throughout the Southeast. And we have one of the first Rosenwald schools built. We're going to redo the Rosenwald school. You know, there's a garden down there. We're going to redo the garden. There's a gym attached to that Rosenwald school. This was all part of Fairmont, which was the African American high school here in Spalding County. We're going to renovate all that, renovate and lease out these spaces to generate income for these because they are falling apart now. And we're going to do that all with bonded money. All right, that's the end of the bonded money. The next comes up is pay as you go. Pay as you go is what, <clears throat> as the money's collected, when this sales tax passes in November, it will be April the 1st before the sales tax will increase. Now, who can tell me what the current sales tax rate is in Spalding County? 6%. 6%. Thank you. I've had so many people say, William, why are y'all trying to raise my sales tax to 8%? I want the spots to pass, but I can't afford 8%. I said, it's not 8%. It's not going to 8 It's 6 right now. I said, it went, so when did it go down? I said, January. I said, did you get a big raise in January? Did you feel that 1%? <laughs> Didn't even know it wasn't 1%. So the aquatic center that we're talking about, we're, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about pickleball. There's a lot of talk about aquatic center. I'm going to tell you something. There's a number of projects on this floor. So does Tom agree with everything that Helen does? And does Tom? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, does Helen agree with everything yeah, Tom? Yeah, does, Helen like, does Helen like everything Tom likes? Does, Tom like, does my wife like everything? No. You know, you got to take some good with the bad. You know, you may not support one or two projects, but there's tremendous projects on here to benefit countywide. We don't call them Spalding County projects. We call them countywide because everybody can use them. And, you know, you may not agree with a couple of projects here, but golly, it sure would be nice to do some bridges. It sure would be nice to do a lot of resurfacing. I probably, you know, I got a pool in my backyard. I'm probably never going to use this, but my grandkids might use this splash pad. Splash pads are money makers, generators of money. So we put some splash pads and some rental facilities in to go along with this aquatic center and have those as money making parts. So, uh, you know, we're trying our best to cover the cost, operating cost of many of these. Will it cover it 100%? No. But we're doing our best to make <coughs> everything pay for itself on these spots. Ambucks Park. I don't know if you've been to many of our parks, but Ambucks is one of the older parks. Uh, it used to be called Patrick Park, and as a little kid, um, I went there and played in the gym and things like that. The gym's not air conditioned. The fences are in disrepair. The playground is old and in disrepair. We're going to do a lot of improvements there, concession stand, things like that. City Park. I don't know if you've ever been there, but take a ride through City Park. Go look at that gym that's over 60 years old. Look at that beautiful hardwood floor. We've renovated in there, but it's not air conditioned. To day like today, it's warm in there. Uh, a day like August, it's real hot in there. So we're going to air condition the gymnasium, change a few things around, do some renovations there. Dundee Lake Park, just down the road from y'all. We've got pavilions there. We're going to install two new ones. We're going to redo the restrooms. We're going to spruce up that park a little. 
Wyoming and Tyus Olympic Park. You know, everybody thinks that all we're doing at Wyoming and Tyus is soccer. Well, that's not true. We're doing soccer likes out there, but we're also doing improvements to a playground that was put out there with the 96 clause. If you've ever rented one of the pavilions out there, you know that there's only one restroom for the three pavilions that are out there. And when all those pavilions are rented, there's a line at that restroom. So we're going to expand the restrooms out there. I know y'all going to do sailing out there at the uh, Cowan Road Park, or Wyoming Ties Park Lake. That's a big thing. These are some nets and things and fencing need repair. Animal shelter. I know everybody here has at least one animal, right? <laughs> at least one. So uh, our animal shelter. <clears throat> This project was on the last floss that didn't pass. Our animal shelter is in bad shape. It's a functional facility. That's about the best I can say for it. It functions, but it's not a nice place to go to adopt. It's not a nice place to go if you have an injured dog or cat or you want to take something down there or something like that. You have a grandchild that comes and wants to go adopt a kitten or something like that. It's not a real nice place for that. So we're going to be renovating our animal facility, and we're going to <coughs> go from this open trench area <coughs> you see. We're going to renovate that. We're going to make more uh, dog runs with inside and outside. We're going to make more <coughs> cat places for cat friendly. Right now, the cats are kept in with the dogs. You know, that's like, uh, well, that just doesn't work. <laughs> so uh, we're going to change that. We're going to have an adoption room, a new office. Because right now, if you, if you do try to go in and adopt, and somebody's coming into the office to pick up their dog or something, everybody's cramped into a space about as big as these two tables right here. And it's not very user-friendly. So we want to make it user-friendly, renovate the place, because animal control is a big issue in this county, and our animal shelter is a big issue. Another big issue here is our library. Anybody ever been to the library? All right, look at that. We got big library folks here. You'll know when you walk in that they do have computers. They're not running X, uh, Windows 95. They're probably running XP or maybe Windows 7. But they haven't been updated in a long time because the uh, state doesn't give them money for computers anymore. The state changed the lottery computation and they used to give money for computers and books and materials for libraries. They don't do that anymore. So if they rely totally upon the county to do that, we haven't had a lot of money to do that either. We just put $10,000 in their budget last year for books and materials, and it only made a slight dent in what they need. So we put $250,000 in there for the library, for <coughs> new electronics, new materials, things like that. If you haven't been to the library lately, they have changed. Um, the county recently helped them moved the children's from upstairs to downstairs and recarpeted the entire library with a grant, top and bottom. I encourage you to go take a look at it. You'll be impressed with our library and you'll be really impressed when we get the new equipment in there. <clears throat> fire department and public safety. I know you all see our DuPont Safety Yellow fire engines running around out here, don't you? We've been out here several times. A lot of our equipment is old, older, and needs replacing. Particularly our extrication equipment and some of our trucks, we also have to respond to small fires. You know, we're still pretty much a rural county, probably 55% of the county, 60% is still rural. So we still have people who, for good or bad, will drag their leaves into the into the ditch in front and set them on fire. And sometimes that gets carried away. But we've got to drive this $500,000 fire truck out to put out a little fire that's about as big as this table right here. It may have gotten out of hand. So we're buying two new brush trucks, our quick response vehicles. They're smaller units that can get out and go to things like this, go to small fires like that, can go to small forest fires, things like that. You don't have to drag this half million dollar truck out there. But we also have a truck that we're using first out that's over 20 years old. So we need to replace that truck as well. So we got a lot of things going on in uh, public safety as well. Gang reduction and intervention program. The highlights for the SPLOS. This is our next spotlight of SPLOS in the Griffin Daily News for next week, this week. So uh, should be in soon. 
grip program. The sheriff's department, I know they've been out here and talked to you about uh, gangs and Griffin and Spalding County. Unfortunately, we weren't able to fund any additional slots for employees this year, but we are putting the machinery and equipment, the cars, everything needed to equip for six in the SPLOS so that, as I said, these are pay as you go projects, so it's over the next six years. Hopefully the tax digest will grow and we'll be able to add on those six employees and it'll save us this uh, money. We won't have to buy the new vehicles, the new equipment, and we won't buy it until we have the money to fund the personnel because there's no point in buying equipment and letting it sit there for six years until you can afford the personnel. That's why we put it on pay as you go. A lot of folks ask, why didn't you put that up front and issue bonds for it? That's why, because we couldn't afford the personnel right now to go with it. So we put it on pay as you go. So over the next six years, we'll maybe be able to hire one a year and we can afford the equipment and everything to go with that person to establish a gang squad. <coughs> transportation. Got a little bit over $8 million in there for transportation and uh, that's for resurfacing. We're about to start resurfacing um, how many miles, Mr. Mosley? Uh, 16 miles, isn't it? 15, 16 miles of resurfacing. You know, last year we resurfaced, I'm going to teach you not to look at that phone. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, uh, last year we resurfaced about 23 miles and Jordan Hill Road was one of those roads we resurfaced. But the county gets about 400 to 500,000 a year to resurface roads. It costs about $100,000 a mile to resurface a county road. Now, Kenny's going to talk to you about city streets. It costs about double that on city streets because most of those are curb and gutter. But Kenny will talk to you about that. But just like to resurface Jordan Hill Road out here is $100,000 a mile just to put an inch and a half of topping on it, restripe it, and pull the shoulders back and things like that. So, um, We've got money in there for resurfacing. The counties, because we didn't pass the T-SPLOST a few years back, we have to match that DOT dollar with 30 cents on every dollar, or we don't get it. So we don't have that money in the general fund. The only money we have is in SPLOST funds. The 15 miles that we're doing starting mid part of this month is paid for. That's the last part of the 2008 SPLOST that we're doing. We're doing bridge work, like the Jordan Hill Road Bridge down here. We're doing intersection improvements, like intersections two and intersection three that we talked about. Two is the one in the flats, Northside Drive and Jordan Hill Road. We're going to put a run, uh, a roundabout, not a runaround, a roundabout there. And we're, uh, we have design for a realigned four-way stop at East McIntosh and Jordan Hill Road. So I know y'all use those roads a lot. So that's a couple of projects that we're doing as well. Part of that's funded from the 2008 SPLOS, and depending on how much we spend on one intersection, we may or may not have enough to complete the other, so I'll hopefully be able to use some 2015 for that. Kenny Smith, City Manager of Griffin. I know he's been here before. This whole only got two slides. <laughs> okay, thank y'all very much for having me. City of Griffin has uh, a couple of projects in that I'll explain to you very quickly. I know you guys were not actually in the city of Griffin. Wish it were, but you're not. Uh, but I know you visit there. I hope you do anyway. And as you know, a large portion of the sales tax is generated within the corporate limits of the city of Griffin. So we've got some projects uh, that we've incorporated into the Spots referendum as well. The first of which, this building you may be familiar with, this is our old historic city hall. That building was built in 1910. It was originally City Hall, later the fire department, later the police department has been vacant for about 14 years, partially vacant about 20 years before that, completely <coughs> vacant uh, for about the last 14 years once the police department moved out. That building, just like any building that sits vacant now, is in a pretty sad state of disrepair. That is a historic building, as you can tell by the architecture, and I'm not a historian, so I can't explain to you all that uh, significance about the architecture, but we'd like to save that building. To do that, it's going to take us about three and a half million dollars. It will have to be completely gutted. The roof's been leaking for quite some time. We're working with the historical society to, to try to bring it back to its original architecture on the inside, and that's going to take about three and a half million dollars. 
the option is that building will probably fall down within the next few years. We bonded this project because we don't feel like it will last as you go time. We don't feel like it will last another six years uh, unless we can do something to save that building. On the left hand side of the slide here is our uh, fire department headquarters building. That building was built in 1959. It needs a complete electrical overhaul, a complete plumbing overhaul. And the insurance services office tells us that we need to move that slightly north because of the growth on the north side of the city, the commercial growth on the north side of the city in order to maintain our current rating which inside the city. You know what an ISO rating is? Okay. Inside the city that rating is two, which we're very, very proud of. But to maintain that, uh, we need to move that headquarters slightly north and we need a new building. Like I said, that building was built in 59. And if I don't get a new building, I've got to spend a whole lot of money to renovate that building. And also the bays of that building are not large enough now for the new equipment. Uh, our ladder truck has to be housed in another facility because it won't fit in the bays there. Uh, our ladder truck, speaking of that, our current ladder truck is 20 years old. We purchased it new because I'm, per I mean used because I'm a pretty cheap guy and I thought I could get away with purchasing a used vehicle and save a little money. Uh, now that vehicle needs about $500,000 worth of overhaul. This is a 105 foot ladder truck and we need a ladder truck that is that high because of St. George's, uh, the city hall is actually six stories. So we do have a few buildings that we need a ladder truck where we would need to risk the people at the lower part of the building call on fire. So I have two options. I have to spend $500,000 to rebuild a 20 year old truck in order for it to pass an inspection and keep my ass rating, or I can buy a new truck. Anybody want to guess what a new 105 foot aerial ladder truck costs? Anybody that hasn't already been to a presentation and heard this thing? $1.1 million. That's with limited equipment. That's not fully equipped because I can use some of the equipment off there. $1.1 million for one piece of fire apparatus. It'll still be red. Yeah, it'll be red. <laughs> but all together, we put about $5 million into this plus for a new headquarters building and a new ladder truck um, to go with that building. We also have some debt. We got a mortgage also, as we even talked about, they owe some money on some property. The only way we get property is if kind of like, well, not you guys, y'all pay cash for your houses. But <laughs> when I bought my house, I had a mortgage. So when the city buys property, we have to we have to lease purchase it or finance it. This is the uh, debt on the current city hall building. I pay $166,000 every six months. I would like to take that out of my budget and hopefully have some tax reduction there as well. Uh, and, and I like to explain to everybody that I view this as having three options, okay? So I want you to understand I have three options. One option is you always have the option not to do anything, right? That's always an option. There are consequences that come with not doing anything, but we can always not do nothing, okay? Or, if I do something, then I have two options to pay for something. And keep in mind that all the government's money comes from you, right? The government does nothing with our own money. I'm talking about federal government, state government, local government, county, city. It all comes from you. So I have two options to get that money from you. I can do it with property tax or I can do it with sales tax. If I do it with sales tax, then a lot more people participate. Because we have about, uh, what is it, 40% of our funds come from outside the county. Uh, I have a lot of employees that, that work for me at the city, but live in Pike, Lamar, Butts, Luxor, Henry, Fayette. And I tell them that I would really like for them to participate in some of these costs because they go to lunch every day and, you know, they'll stop by Walmart on their way home. I'd like for them to participate in paying for some of this stuff. So us that live in the county don't pay for all of it through our property tax. So remember those are the three options that William and I have. Do nothing, pay for it with SPLOSS, or pay for it with your money that I get from you some other way. And the only other thing I have on the next slide is 
You know, as you travel from here downtown, we've got some challenges in some of our uh, uh, residential areas on the north side of town. We've got some blighted problems. What the city's done over the last several years is try to attack this with budgeted funds. We budget about $250,000 a year to get rid of blighted property and substandard property. It's a long process to go through the courts to be able to demo or knock down somebody else's property that we don't own. It's a court process and it cost me about $6,000 every time I go through the process to tear down one piece of lighted property. Uh, because that's a, a financial strain to do that, sometimes we're taking one step forward and two steps back because by the time we go through the process to knock one down, a couple of more have now joined the blighted property list. So we have uh, put in this floss $500,000 per year, pay as you go, for the six year time frame, which is $3 million, to actually go in and really attack some of these neighborhoods that we need to level. Then we will own the property because we're gonna buy the property, tear down the houses, and then hopefully if we do it in blocks, we can then redevelop those properties with some nice affordable housing block by block. Now we're doing one here, one here, and one here, and they're still intermingled with a bunch of the junk in the middle. So we can't turn it over to the developer because he's not gonna build a new house when one of these houses is right beside it. So we've gotta take a broader approach to doing that. So we put that money in pay as you go. And finally, as we have said, we've got transportation issues in the city. You know that when you visit us, we've got streets that need paving, we've got intersections that need attention, we've got sidewalks to nowhere that we need to meet up. We've got about 30 miles of streets in the city that we need to pave, and we put about $8 million in this floss. And because we have cur curb and gutter, we can't just continue to resurface, resurface, and resurface because the asphalt gets up to the top of the curb, and then you have drainage problems. Cost, we said 100000 just to resurface. It costs twice that much if we have to go in and mill that asphalt back down and resurface. So $8 million sounds like a lot of money, but when you're dealing with transportation issues, that doesn't go very far. We hope to get 30 miles of streets and about five miles of sidewalks. So those are the city projects, and I thank Sunnyside and Orchard Hill. Yes, sir. I have to call the plans. All right, City of Orchard Hill, City of Sunnyside. Both of those are going to get <coughs> warning sirens, uh, tornado warning sirens. That was one of their big projects for each one of them. The City of Orchard Hill is also going to put another pavilion in their park in the intersection here of County Line Road and Macon Road. They're going to do some improvements to that intersection. And their old water tank, they're going to refurbish that as well. So they've got transportation, recreation, and public safety projects there. City of Sunnyside, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to get a tornado warning siren. They're going to put another playground at their park. If you've ever been up to Sunnyside, you see they've got a nice Sunnyside City Hall, and they've got a paved and uh, rubberized walking trail around that. They're also going to put up some of these, try to get folks to slow down up there. They're going to put up some of these solar-powered speed limit signs. This is an intersection offset up there that they have a lot of problems with. It's where Teeman Road comes into Old Atlanta and then School Road comes into Old Atlanta. So it's a zigzag. You got a zig and zag to go through this. See that truck? When I took these pictures, it came out over here and it came over here. So uh, Sunnyside and City, excuse me, Sunnyside and Orchard Hill are going to do that. They're also going to do a sewer study to talk about any sewer that they may want to do in the future. There we go, in Sunnyside. All right, one more question for me, and then uh, I guess we'll uh, ask the question, and then we'll let Naomi come up. How much do you think one penny, one penny of sales tax generates in Spalding County in one month? Any guesses? If you do the quick math, 72 into 50 million four hundred thousand dollars is seven hundred thousand dollars a month. 
Just one little penny. One penny, $700,000 a month. And as I told you, when the spouse passes in November, according to the state, it implements within the next calendar quarter, 90 days after the election. So it can't go into effect January 1st. It goes into effect April. The first money that the city or county will see to pay off the debt service, and that's what we got to pay off first, is the bonds that we're going to issue. Every year, the amount of the annual debt service in those bonds is paid up front, and then the remiss, the rest is for pay as you go projects. It will be the end of May before we will see the first penny to that because it takes, they collect it in April, they remit it to the state in May, <coughs> and then by the end of the month, supposedly, the state of Georgia remits it to the cities and counties. And remember, for up to 40, 35 to 40 percent is being paid by folks who don't even live here. If you go to, um, now I'm going to ask you a pointed question. How many folks go to Publix and Henry County to buy their groceries? <laughs> <laughs> be, be honest with me, raise your hand. I, my, my mother lives over here on 155 inside the Spotty County line and she drives to Publix to get her groceries. And I told her I was going to disown her because she's paying for Henry County projects with their spas. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Y'all are helping me a lot to get that here. but but. Just think about it. Just if that one penny was staying here, how much it would generate? So seven hundred thousand dollars a month. All right, Clay, we want to do questions, or we want to do uh, questions? No, no, we're going to do questions. All right. We're going to do the single questions for clarification. This is not jump up on come your on, box. Of, come on, Kenny. Come on up here. Yeah, these are simple questions for clarification to understand. If you got hard questions, Commissioner Hallbacker's in back, and Eric's over here. Philosophically, you may not agree with the way that the county's doing this. That's okay. That's a different issue. This pur purpose of what we're trying to get here is to make sure that you understand what is on this plus so you can make that philosophical decision. So with that, we'll start with Ellen. Uh, Kenny, what is the old courthouse, I mean the old city hall? What, have you got plans for that? Yeah, a lot of moving parts. There, there's some studies going on now. Um, you know, I really don't want to get into about the long-term use for it. We got backup plans. Uh, you know, the archives. We visited the archives is over at the old Table Street School. We want to combine the archives and the little museum we've got at the Welcome Center. We want to combine those, and that would be a good place for that. There's also, if you recall, if you've ever been in that building, the top part of it where they used to have court is a vast expanse that we could use for for large meetings downtown. Uh, so there are several possibilities and there's a lot of moving parts right now that, that if the squad passes and we see the light at the end of the tunnel, we'll put something concrete there. The main thing now is to say that the... question regarding a squad, because I'm new to the area, I'm not really sure how this works. It's a, it's a great idea. But uh, the question... Are we voting and saying yes to all of it? Okay. That's one question we get a lot. Why can't you put a ballot out there with these 33 projects on it and let me vote for the ones I want? The state constitution won't let us do that. The state of Georgia will not let us do that. And by the way, Georgia is the only state in the union right now that has special purpose local option sales tax. And for those of you who don't know, Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax was the brainchild of a former county commissioner, Spalding County Commissioner Jim Goolsby, in the 80s, set in the late 70s, early 80s, when the high schools, when the courthouse burned. We did the first, it wasn't called SPLOS then, we did a local option tax to build a high school, a jail, and to rebuild the courthouse. And that was the first time it was ever done in the state of Georgia. And now you can do it in all 159. But the state will not let you have a vote. It's a yes, no vote. It's all or nothing. It's like getting married. Like I told you, it's all or nothing. you got to take the, the sweet Helen with the mean tongue. <laughs> the county commissioners 
decide on the projects. The county commissioners held several meetings and asked for inquiry for projects and things like that. And a local group here came from Sun City and said, we want pickleball. So that's one of the projects that got up there. Local groups came and said, we think the animal shelter is important. That's how that got there. The library came to us and said, that's important. That's how that got there. Park and Rec came to us. That's how that got there. Yes, sir. I have 6,322 questions. <laughs> I have 6,322 answers. <laughs> Just a couple quick ones. Uh, you anticipate that you're going to bring all of this revenue in by having these pickleball tournaments, right? Yes, sir. Who organized it? And do you have a budget to determine uh, like manpower needs and so on and so forth? Who's going to organize it? For all of our SPLOS projects, when they were included, we asked for operational posts. There will be a pickleball association form, just like we have a soccer association, which actually runs the soccer program. The county only owns the fields and takes up, pays for the fields and maintenance and things like that. The soccer association runs the program, and a portion of those proceeds go back to the county for upkeep and operation. Same thing with pickleball. We have someone who's a pickleball expert, or what did you say, a pickleball aficionado, aficionado who happens to be in this room, that is going to spearhead the association for the first couple of years, get it started, and maintenance on that facility, it's not air conditioned. It, it's, it's partially covered, so there's very little maintenance. You go out there, you hose it down, keep going, move on. So it's, it's not, it's not like a playground where you have to go inspect it. By the way, you may not know this, but playgrounds have to be inspected weekly. Weekly. Every playground we have has to be inspected weekly. Uh, it's not something that you got to go out and do like that. So it's very little manpower, but the county will not operate the program. That will be operated by an association. Yes, ma'am. Is it open to the public? Is it open to everybody that lives in Spalding County? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, how many people in Spalding County even know what pickleball is? Um, we hope that 64,478 know after these 20, 20, this is the 22nd, I think, one of these that we've done. So, and that's only one project on the SPLOS, so don't kill the SPLOS, don't throw out the baby with bad water. How many of these young people can afford pickleball apples? I mean, I understand they're like 78 or so dollars. Well, they're walking around with an iPhone. Yes, they are. Obama folks. Obama don't give you an iPhone. That's a priority. <laughs> yes, ma'am, it's, ma it's a matter of priorities. It certainly is. It, yes. Uh, you said, I think, earlier that you are using the remainder of 2008 splash money to finish the resurfacing of road projects that you're doing today. That's correct. And if the splash were not to pass, what happens with roads in 2016, 17, 18, 19, etc.? All right. We usually get, we usually try to pay them about seven to eight miles a year. That's seven to eight hundred thousand dollars. The state will give us about four to five hundred thousand. But in order for us to get to four or five hundred, I gotta put the other three hundred with it. So either I'm gonna raise taxes, property taxes, three hundred thousand dollars to pay those roads, or like we've done before, we're not gonna pay roads. We're not gonna resurface roads. That's what's gonna happen. Like Kenny said, you got three choices. Do nothing, pay pay for it with splos, pay for it with property. Has uh, anybody visited the issue of SPLOT and changing it to line item votes? It has been addressed, but it would take the vote of the legislature and a change by them. Um, it's, the last time that occurred? Um, I think it was discussed four or five years ago, but it never got off the House floor. In, in December, we're going to bring both the General Assembly Senator and our representative in here to be able to talk to us about what we want to do. It'll be a great opportunity to say to them if somebody wants to, we would like to change the way SPLOS is done. Yep. So we'll have both of them. Because they have to argument. introduce it and get the legislature to approve it, and then the governor would have to say it. I think there was somebody. Yes, ma'am? Uh, regarding the aquatic center, I don't know if either of the high schools have a 
swim team? They do. They do. Okay, so would the aquatic center then be used for those swim teams, or do they already have pools in their in their schools? They don't have any pools. The only pool, the public pool, in Spalding County is the city of Griffin pool that uh, Kenny Kenny has. It's only open two months a year, and that pool is about thirty five ish. 45 <laughs> years old. The schools use it to practice with when it's open, but they primarily use pub, uh, private pools, or there is a pool at Gordon College all the way down in Barnes. Uh, so they can't, they can't possibly be competitive with They can't swim year round here right now. With this aquatic facility, they could. But your question is, can they, be, can they swim competitively in a private pool? Nobody has a private pool that has lanes. You're, you're correct. No teams that practice all right. They can practice competitively yeah. during the summer months, but during the winter months, they either have to travel to Barnesville and utilize Gordon College, which is such what a, both. It's such a wonderful sport for kids to get them involved in. This. And there's both a high, Griffin High and a Spalding High, and then there's also the Griffin Gators, which you see a lot in the newspaper. Is the association that runs the swim team at City Park Pool. And those associations, they pay the city of Griffin to utilize their pool. They'll pay to utilize this facility along with Spalding High will pay, Griffin High will pay, and if uh, primarily the other facilities, daycares like to go to splash pads and things like that, or maybe you want to have a birthday party. Uh, for your grandkid at a splash pad, you'll be able to rent it out and things like that. I want to start finishing this on up, so if you don't want, both of them are going to, everybody's going to be here. Everybody's going to be here. Afterwards, so all you have to do is just wait till we clear the room out, grab hold of one of them, and start asking all your questions. All right, let's do the last couple of questions here before we bring Nayud up. Okay, anybody else? Yes, sir. If you haven't seen City Pool, you ought to go visit <laughs> because City Pool is not a uh, Class A facility. No, or B, or, or C, C. or D. <laughs> if, if City Pool is just packaged, uh, I mean, this all is left. It's, it's, it's functional to this. It's a barrier. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a whole one. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're just keeping it functional because that's all we got. All right, so now I'd like to kind of transition for a little bit. Uh, let's have uh, Don Hallbaker, our county commissioner, talk for just a few minutes on that, and then we'll bring in the uh, uh, chairman for the SPLOS committee to wrap it up. As one of the five people on the board of commissioners who voted for the county projects that you just seen, uh, I can tell you that we thought every one of them was worthy and would move the county forward. And that's why we and put it out to you all to, to vote on. Um, and it's up to you all to do that, to, to, to vote. All I'm advocating is everybody, please be sure and vote. Vote yes or vote no, but for goodness sakes, vote. Um, I will tell you that if that uh, uh, debt payoff occurs, that the SPLOS funds uh, are generated, so we pay off the county debt, a millage rate decrease is baked in the formula. It will happen. Um, the other thing I'd just like to say very briefly, something that's sort of become personal to me, is getting that bridge down in the flats. As you go past the light there, about 400 feet beyond that light is about a 30 foot long bridge over Cabin Creek. I, <clears throat> I asked the man who schedules the school buses what impact that has by school buses not being allowed to go over that bridge. They haven't been allowed to go over that bridge in 10 years. It affects 43 routes daily, a.m. and p.m. And he did the math for me in terms of everything from additional manpower and gas, and that is a drip, drip waste every day of at least $200 and about $37,000 a year. If we pass SPLOS, those funds can be used to re immediately begin replacing that bridge. At the same time, the roundabout goes in. There's, there are funds allocated for that, but they are federal and state funds. And in order to actually implement them, we have to go through 18 months of environmental impact studies, 
and, and other sort of studies just to get uh, full use of those funds. If we use FLOSS funds, uh, those federal and state funds can be moved to another needy bridge in, in our county. And uh, so I would just, you know, to me, I'd like to be able to see that bridge replaced at the same time as a roundabout so those kids, for the first time in 10 years, don't have to go on these big detours and the county quit wasting a minimum of $200 a day just because of that. The last thing I want to say is, I think the easiest way to vote is by absentee, personally. That's the way I always vote. And if anybody wants a request form to send in, uh, a request for an absentee ballot, they're gonna start going out as of Monday. I've already sent in my request, and I've got absentee ballot request forms and instructions on exactly how to fill it out. Uh, come by and see me, and, and you can have uh, the instructions and the uh, ballot request. Thank you very much. Monday starts early voting. That's right. So if you want to start, now that you've had the briefing, we tried to have this briefing before we had our early voting to be able to do that. All right, let's wrap it up with the chairman for the uh, SPLOS committee, Diode. Thank you, uh, Clay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Diode. I mean, I uh, volunteer to uh, <laughs> <laughs> support this SPLOS proposal. I heard everything that was uh, presented, and I thought just being a lifelong resident here, I thought it was a golden opportunity to help this community to take a positive step in the right direction. And uh, as was said, there are many projects here. And uh, I think they all, for various reasons, they were chosen. And I, I can see where this will enable us to put a good face on this community. There are some amenities here, and that's what you can just call them. That's what they are. Many of the community uh, citizens here over the years have supported various arts proposals, but it always is about just the bare things that we need in this particular squad. There are some things that will address some quality of life issues, and I think uh, that's good. And it also makes this community more attractive. I serve on several boards here, and uh, this particular squad, I can tell you from being in the contracting field for the last um, 37 years, being a business owner for the last 27 years, or maybe almost 30 years, now, that uh, we are in a position now to take advantage of some things. And as Mr. Smith said earlier, we are in a place now where this community can become more attractive for development. One thing we have to keep in mind, this the SPLOS, that is a new thing for some of you, if you are not Georgia residents, prior to coming to Sun City. Our industrial parks and the hundreds of millions of dollars they have gained into Griffin's Park and Industrial Parks, the Lake Fair Green Valley, Green Valley Industrial Park, Hudson Industrial Park, Many of these parks was funded with SPLOS money, and the, the thousands of jobs that have been created over the years, the hundreds of millions of dollars worth of economic development in our Lakes at Green Valley Park that was um, part of the 2008 SPLOS. We have over 680 acres with three industrial projects that are out there now, and that have over $100 million worth of investment, and those parks those are dollars that many of us, you don't think about, that's gonna be calculated into paying property taxes. So just keep that in mind. But once again, election day, early voting began October the 12th through the 30th, general election November the 3rd. What we would have here in the way of this plus that we're talking about, if you don't like it, then you can vote it down you can continue to travel to the surrounding counties and help them pay for that slot because you don't want it here. Or we could do some things here that are be creative and make our community more attractive so we can get some of that economic investment from the private sector. This is only $50.4 million that we, the citizens, are going to be generating 
from the what we would call the governmental side. But this can spearhead opportunities for those in the private sector, the investors, those who are developers, to make our community stand out as the crown jewel that you all never knew that existed many years ago. We was falling down. We've fallen on some hard times in the last couple of generations. And I'd like to see it come back. So once again, thank you all very much. And I'm asking you, these gentlemen could, but I'm asking you to come out and be very supportive of this effort, this initiative. I think it's something that's going to be great and uh, we all can benefit from it. Thank you. We'll have the sen senator, the general assembly, and our representative in here to talk about issues that they're going to face during the uh, next year. Uh, that's the time to uh, ask questions about things that we're interested in or tell them our position on stuff. That ends it. Please go ahead and grab hold of these people and ask questions. They're prepared to answer those questions. Business cards here.